Good day everybody, I'm Alex Bainbridge. Welcome back to The Green Left Show. Today we have the honour of spending time with iconic Palestinian revolutionary Leila Khaled. In an interview with Peter Boyle, she talks about the International Court of Justice genocide ruling, what really happened on October 7, and solutions to the Palestine-Israel conflict and more. A famous mural of Leila Khaled adorns an Israeli apartheid wall isolating the West Bank in Palestine. She is a member of the National Committee of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine and a representative on the Palestinian National Council. She lives in exile in Jordan today and spoke to Green Left via Zoom. Leila Khaled will be a featured international guest speaker at Eco-Socialism 2024, a conference in Bourlou or Perth from June 28th to 30th this year. Eco-Socialism 2024 will bring together activists from around the country, around the region and indeed around the world. You can find out more about the conference, follow progress towards this event and more at greenleft.org.au. At the website, you can also find out how you can become a Green Left supporter, the number one way of supporting our work and uh, getting the content that we produce. Before we get started, I want to acknowledge that we, this, this video is being recorded on stolen Aboriginal land. It always was and always will be Aboriginal land. And we extend our solidarity to anti-colonial struggles, whether they be in this country, Palestine, or in fact, anywhere in the world. Take it away, Peter. So thank you very much to, uh, for speaking Great. to us here in Australia, which is very far away. But, you know, for the last, ever since October, every week, thousands of people have been uh, demonstrating uh, against uh, genocide. And uh, not mm -hmm. just big demonstrations, but many families have been making uh, kites with their children, with mm -hmm. with uh, Palestinian flags and, and Rafa on it and flying it. And this way it is going even to the smallest towns. Um, mm -hmm. As Israel is now already started its assault on Rafa, uh, the Netanyahu regime is not even pretending to be following the interim orders of the International Court of Justice. What is your assessment of the ICJ case and the responses of the different world powers to the interim orders and the continuing genocide in Gaza? Now, um, uh, I suppose that uh, South Africa who uh, wanted to uh, prove that, that uh, genocide is going on in Palestine. They are now following up. And also another country, Nicaragua, also following up uh, ICJ because uh, Israel is not abiding by any rules by the court itself. And there is a lot of uh, pressure on Israel now. In a, a, the uh, ICJ on the 26th of uh, February should have the second uh, uh, I mean, meeting. But now there is a lot of pressure on the court to meet uh, because Israel is declaring they are going to attack Rafah. People there are one million and a half now in Rafah because they drove the people from the south and from the city of Gaza to go to the south in Rafah. They went there, but now they don't allow them to go back to their houses, even if they are bombarded. But uh, uh, this means that Israel is a state of apartheid, a state of uh, 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 acting as if it's uh, above the international law. So we are waiting now to see what will happen when uh, yani Israel doesn't abide. It's now already attacking in Rafah, but they are not on the ground from out from outside. They are bombarding only by planes, but uh, not the same way as what happened in the north. And uh, until now, uh, United States administration is not putting enough power uh, pressure on Israel because she, it's the only administration can put all the pressure that needs to stop 
the genocide going on in, in Rafah now because people don't uh, believe what the uh, what Israel says that uh, they will open a safe road where to there is no safe road there is no safe place in, in, the, in the whole strip not only in uh, the city or in uh, because they are still in Khan Yunis. Khan Yunis is a city uh, uh, beside Rafah. And people went out from the hospital. They were snipe There were snipers who killed four doctors and arrested the uh, the uh, team, many the medical team, including doctors and uh, uh, I mean, the people that help also there. And so people couldn't leave Khan Yunis. They couldn't come to Rafah. And Rafah is a very small I mean, uh, district. It's not a big city. To have one million and about 300 or 400,000 uh, people. So uh, now it's time for people who demonstrated in support of uh, uh, the Palestinians and the uh, the atrocities that Israel is doing for them. Now they have to pressure their country, their governments. Like in Australia, they they are supporting Israel. Uh, the attitude of the Australian government. Uh, and the other countries who are still saying that Israel has the right to defend itself. But Israel is not defending now. It's attacking all the time for four months ago. And still we have casualties in children, in women, when they bombard or destroy the house by uh, another means of destruction in different parts of Gaza. So people don't have any place to go to today, except if the, the uh, Rafah uh, border will be opened, and it's not opened yet. They are not receiving any kind of human aids, like water, medicine, food. They don't receive anything. And Israel meant by that when they prevent the uh, aids to come into, uh, uh, although the court uh, ordered Israel to let the uh, aids to go to all the uh, strip, uh, the cities, the suburbs, or whatever, especially in the north. So uh, Israel is not abiding. So why, where to go for the people? And the uh, uh, crossroads of on on Rafah, it's closed. Even if the uh, uh, Egyptians, uh, which is the, uh, they have the sovereignty of this uh, uh, border, but Israel does not allow uh, anybody to go there or to go uh, out or in. So uh, everything is closed. It means the siege. Now we we have to work on governments to abide by the rules that the court ordered Israel to do and to make this pressure by taking action whatever the steps they take. And for example, they can say that uh, no diplomatic uh, relations. This is one of the means to pressure Israel to stop its genocide war. And at the same time, they can uh, boycott the uh, products of Israel. This makes pressure on Israel itself from different countries of the world. But until now, those who are, especially the Europeans, uh, are linked with the orders of uh, uh, the uh, uh, American administration, they are not taking steps. Only they hear the people shouting and <laughs> calling for the Palestine. Uh, yes. the, the Zionist regime told many, many lies about October 7 to try and justify its genocidal attack. What is yes. the PFLP's understanding of what really happened in Operation Al-Aqsa flood? You know, the, uh, 
freedom fighters attack did not attack people there they uh, attacked uh, one of the uh, uh, military uh, group in that uh, settlement and they were attacking only the army and not the people but when the borders were open some people went also to, to these places, they uh, took uh, civilians. And in one of the uh, deals that was done, uh, uh, neither uh, Israel nor the West media could prove that they made massacres. Nobody, nobody came to tell that there were uh, massacres because there were hostages from the civilians, they said we were dealt with uh, very uh, kindly. And uh, the people whom they exchanged with our uh, prisoners in uh, in the West Bank and in Israeli jails, they did it and they uh, it was uh, it went smooth. Nobody made a mistake about that. So why are they be, uh, speaking like this? just to say that the fighters are terrorists and it is in the law in in the international law people who are under occupation have the right to defend themselves with all means including armed struggle and this is the armed struggle this is armed struggle yes we have the right to defend ourselves from occupation and the siege over gaza so they wanted to make lies but they didn't have any evidence. Even Biden, when he showed a picture, CNN said he doesn't have any evidence that this is what happened in uh, 7 October. That the people of the world were demonstrating in support of the Palestinians who were in siege for 17 uh, years. Mm -hmm. And they knew about it. A lot of wars... Uh, uh, Israel attacked uh, uh, Gaza, all Gaza, the people. That was without 7 October. They uh, went uh, uh, attacking four times and many casualties, including the children who were sometimes in one of them, they uh, killed about 2,000 children. The second time, there were uh, about more than 2,000 children. So what are the real reasons why the United States and unfortunately its close allies, including Australia, shamefully, why are mm -hmm. they so strong in their support of the Zionist state? Because this is their uh, uh, original project in 1948. This is a colonial state. Israel is occupying the land of Palestine. And that's why, they, because it protects their interests. They have common interests between the West and the United States with Israel. So for this reason, they support, even yesterday, Biden declared he will send $15 billion to support uh, the economy of uh, Israel. Those... Uh, uh, countries, they have interests with the United States administration, so they support its policy. And this policy ended up with, now we are seeing this uh, uh, war against the Palestinians, all Palestinians, not against Hamas or any army else, but uh, uh, they are attacking our people, uh, making atrocities against the people are not Hamas. They don't see Hamas. Hamas is not uh, an army. Hamas is also, as a part of the Palestinian resistance, is also freedom fighters. Uh, what is your assessment of the so-called two-state solution that began with the Oslo Accords in the context of what all the things that have happened, uh, not just recently, but actually for many years, by Israel. Uh, has it failed? And if it has failed, what would be an alternative that uh, we could, you know, that would be good and that could be one? 
this uh, illusion, the two-state solution, this is not a project uh, done by the West and especially the United States. It has been said since 40 years. But it didn't. Uh, they didn't implement any kind of, uh, uh, any uh, a free uh, ground or a free uh, area from our occupied countries. Uh, even with Oslo Accords, in 1999, it was uh, the end of what was in that accord. Uh, that uh, uh, Israel will withdraw. But it didn't say in the accords anything about withdrawal. They said a state, a Palestinian state. But Israel did not abide by what they signed. The agreements that was signed in in uh, the White House in 1993, uh, Israel did not abide by it. And up till now, they don't agree with the Palestinians having... Uh, 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 a state, but this state in the American uh, view for it that the Palestinians should uh, declare that they accept Israel as a state beside them, which we uh, denied some years ago. In 1949, when uh, the United Nations declared a resolution that uh, there will be, after 1967, there will be two states. One, a Jew Jewish state, Not they didn't say Zionist, they said Jewish state, and an Arabic state, and not a Palestinian state. They didn't say that in that uh, resolution. But Israel turned its, its back for all the resolution that was taken Yani, uh, since years ago. Uh, so, for us, the first thing to deal with, to solve the problem, that uh, uh, Israel doesn't have the right to occupy Palestine. And second, the core issues of the Palestinian cause lies in two cores. One, the right for return for the Palestinians. This is the key for solving the, re the resolution. Second, the land. Who will be sovereign over the land? It's not Israel's right to uh, occupy us and continue denying all resolutions in the United Nations. Now we are calling for a democratic state. That the key for it is the return of the Palestinian, the refugees. Second, that we can all together, who live in, in Palestine, we can decide what kind of uh, state we, we, we need, all of us. Without that, this con uh, struggle will continue from generation to generation. Now, those who are fighting, now they are the fourth generation of the Palestinians who are fighting. Because, uh, uh, mind you, there are also camps in the West Bank, refugees. Palestinian refugees in the West Bank. And what we have seen in Jenin for many times until now they are attacked and their houses are demolished, whether in Jenin or in Jerusalem or in the West Bank. On daily uh, base, Israel attacks also in the West Bank. They uh, Up till now, they are arrested about 6,000 uh, people from the West Bank. This is beside the ones that were before 7,000 people until now in Israeli jails. Israel is uh, uh, attacking them every day with bullets, with uh, uh, gas bombs in the cells that they are living in. And still nobody gives uh, uh, any, a call for that. But we are calling also for uh, the release of our uh, uh, prisoners in uh, in exchange with the uh, hostages that are uh, with Hamas uh, from the Israelis, and they are all military. As terrible as the last few months have been for Palestinians, 
it is mm -hmm. a huge movement has grown up around the world and many new activists, younger generation people have joined this struggle and in a sustained yes. sort of way. Mm -hmm. Do you have a message uh, for this new generation of activists as mm -hmm. somebody who has spent a whole life in revolutionary struggle? What would you say to them? I will say we are thankful to all those who declare their uh, attitude towards the Palestinians and what's happening in Palestine now, nowadays. And now the people of the world realize the core issues of this struggle of the Palestinians. And we are, we will not uh, forget that in this war, Israel was doing uh, genocide. And I saw on, on TV and also what uh, I uh, was received from our comrade, the, uh, the uh, huge uh, demonstrations in uh, Melbourne, in Sydney, which shows that people began to realize the uh, 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 the uh, the reasons behind what's going on, and the, uh, 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 yeah, and they are demand, uh, demanding that uh, the Israeli army stop uh, fire and to withdraw from uh, Gaza Strip and the West Bank also because it is also occupied. So this is what we are telling the whole people and the new generation. Keep on for just uh, cause, for a just cause. Palestinian cause is a human one. Now we are defending humanity, not only uh, in Gaza Strip, but because people now knew that there were lies in history. One of them the Palestinian cause. And now they are uh, trying to build uh, a new history in, in the region against the imperialists, especially the imperial the American imperialism, because they are the ones who launch wars and they are directing, uh, supporting Israel with all means of new uh, arms all the time until now, even the Congress accepted to send money for uh, for uh, Israel to defend its uh, economy, while they, they don't give uh, any any hint for the children who are killed every day in Palestine. Well, that brings us to an end to this episode of the Green F Show. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks Layla Khaled for spending time with us and thanks to Peter Boyle for conducting the interview. If you like the work that we do, please remember you can become a supporter at greenleft.org.au. Plans start from just $5 a month. It's the number one way to support our work and to receive the content that we produce. Until next time, remember there are Palestine rallies happening all over the country uh, very regularly. Find out more in the Green Left calendar and we'll see you on the streets or else we'll see you next time on the Green Left Show. Thank <laughs> you.